Welcome back to another Perspectives. Uh, number 61 it seems, so the numbers are ticking away for those who are counting, or can count. Uh, the opening quote, this time I decided to put an opening quote on, um, because I read it just the other day, and I thought it fitted in with what I've been thinking and what I spoke about previously with the rites of passage, um, near-death experience that the globe, we as a human species, could be experiencing. Um, and Kyriakos Markidis, who is an interesting writer, if anybody wants to look him up, especially his trilogy on the Magus of Stravolus. Um, so it says that we are going to a, a purposeful historical process and the inevitability of this is that there's going to be a kind of lifting of the veil and um, we're going to have these other experiences or paranormal events becoming more frequent, which is a way of showing us that there's a grander reality beyond our five senses. And this you know, is suggesting that it's part of the evolutionary process that we start to get familiar with these uh, extra reality potentials beyond the confines of our current restricted reality set. Um, and that also fits in with um, uh, the last most recent um, talk I had with Quartet about the the kind of UFO phenomena and that I also um, was suggesting that um, it suggests the phenomena represents something else beyond the very two-dimensional dialogue that's out there. That these represents um, interventions um, or even invocations uh, coming through, uh, perhaps like cracks in the cosmic egg, but coming through um, from other realms or spheres or vibrational realities, which rather than us like rather than being manipulated down the fear path and all these silly agendas and disclosures and all these operations coming up, we should realize that these are indications of the human consciousness is on the verge, the threshold of breaking through into other perceptive realities. Um, and so really these are events scattered around coming through in different guises and different forms according to our cultural context because in the West especially um, you know especially with through the globalizing narrative we have this cultural context of technology so these interventions are being seen in the form of technology you know if you look back at this narrative into into past ages you all had these interventions from other realities and sometimes they were called fairies or the little folk you know or um you had notions of jinns or demons or you know other re other type of beings coming in whether they're uh, kind of elementals and other kind of uh, entities. So there's always been a narrative around these interpenetrable interventions. Um, but, be, but there's been a huge swath, a huge increase in this in the last few decades, in the last half a century especially, and, and more so now, which seems to be preparing human consciousness for an expansion into these other realms of reality um, but of course in order to to be able to break through this this quite strong mold this reality set you need a kind of shattering um, which has been referred to as the crack in the cosmic egg um, and so this reminds me also of the um, the french metaphysician René Guénon. And René Guénon, who was writing you know, a century ago, you know, publishing very widely in the 1920s, 30s, up until the 40s, um, was quite prescient in this because René Guénon uh, coined the phrase the solidification of the world. 
And what he meant by that um, is that the world, or especially the westernization of the world, which has now become the globalizing narrative, is moving more and more towards this deep materialism. And it can only get so far because this deep materializing process is solidificate, solidifying uh, our consciousness set and our perception of reality becoming through a, a lens of deeper and deeper materialism. Now to a point, of course, of, of hyper-materialism. Um, <clears throat> and you get to such uh, deepening degrees of materialism that you know something has to crack because it's just getting so solidified that it um, becomes fragile. And when you get to that point, says Gurnon, that actually you do have these cracks in the reality. And he said these infra-psychic forces can enter. Uh, and these infra-psychic forces can be anything. And, and one of these could be the manifestation of what we would term paranormal events. Um, and what we are witnessing as otherworldly uh, energies, events coming through. Now, on the, on the positive side, these otherworldly events are what we would perhaps term a miracle. A miracle really is a, is a phenomena that seems to break the laws of our reality, such as walking on water, as a very basic cliche. Um, but of course, if something comes into our realm and brings its laws with it, then it's not, it seems to be breaking our laws, but it's operating according to other laws beyond our reality. So miracles can be seen of in, as an intervention from a different reality, whereby its laws of operation, which don't usually apply here, are being applied here. So of course, if you have a, a different vibrational frequency, then of course, water, walking on water is just the, the conjunction of two different frequencies. Uh, in our reality, you know, walking on water, you should sink. If you are operating from a different frequency, maybe you don't sink. So you can see there's positive interventions, which we call miracles, and interventions that we are unsure of what it means, and unsure of its consequences and application. So we refer to them as the paranormal. They're beyond our current normal ken of awareness and understanding. Of course, and then those events can be taken and deliberately manipulated to be fearful, to therefore support certain agendas, which is happening now. So, but if we see that in the bigger picture, that these beyond normal events are indications of uh, applications of a, of a greater reality penetrating our current reality, and this penetration, this merger, um, no doubt in time will uh, create a, a new expansive reality awareness in this reality set. So we're having this, this merger right now and it's creating this, this um, cracking of our reality set. Um, and at the same time, when you have those window of opportunity for these different for different forces to mix, you are also going to get the lower psychic um, influences coming in and being tricksters, of course, being little naughty interventions. Um, but again, according to we we so in this time of this dissolution of the strict structures of our reality set, um, we're going to see also at the same time a cultural deconstruction, which I think is what is happening now. This shattering of certain strict junctures and, and strict programming and conditioning. And there are obviously certain forces or um, groups that are going to uh, try to um, exploit 
this time of the dissolution and shattering and splitting uh, to create fear then to obviously to try to take hold of, of what's going to form out of this um, but it, it you know you can't hold back the tide um, you can stand on the beach but if you try to hold back the tide your feet is going to get wet because what's coming has to come it's inevitable and it's part of a whole uh, rearrangement it seems and so this cultural deconstruction when it's had when it's as it happens and we're going to see other influences coming into this reality um, most likely that people will respond to it from their own cultural context and just as we you know in a technologized context or mindset we're going to see may define things as technological interventions or what could be called ufos um, but on the other side um, another um, another culture or other people with a certain cultural conditioning may consider these as uh, apparitions uh, religious spiritual apparitions prophetic sightings uh, angelic sightings and angelic interventions so you see we're seeing um, otherworldly what we would call otherworldly uh, influences and forces and then we're getting a certain filter being placed over them um, which is I which is part of this this dissolving and rearrangement of of our perceptive reality set so of course it's going to be confusing um, and part of that I think part of this um, familiarization with other realities has come through such phenomena as the near-death experience and especially I mean, near-death experience uh, have been recorded for centuries um, and there are there are books that have gone back into history and looking at the history of these of these uh, experiences just that of course they weren't uh, noted down so frequently because of people maybe being worried about being seen as you know devilish in religious contexts but in today's context in the last few decades especially there's so many people coming forward and having these experiences and so we're breaking down the boundaries and you know up until now our programming has put death of the physical body as a boundary and now we're realizing the that there's other realities, a continuation of realities beyond both the physical manifestation of the body and the physicality of our reality. And so through all these experiences being shared, whether it's outer body experiences, near death experiences, um, phenomena such as the crop circles and other paranormal as we would call it beyond our normal ken influences we're starting to break down uh, our our strict filters and in fact um, there was a, a sci psychologist called Kenneth Ring who um, several decades ago uh, you can look at his book called the Omega Project he looked at um, a whole range of these uh, near-death experiences and their accounts and he came to the conclusion that um, what is happening is a is a kind of preparation for an evolutionary shift in humanity and he phrased it as the the shamanizing of humanity as if we're all going through some collective shamanic experience to break down the strictures and the structures of our you know programming and to expand our conscious awareness so interesting phrase the shamanizing of humanity um, as if we're all going i mean the, the shamans have their, their initiation ceremonies as do many other uh, cultures and um, rituals so we can see this also as a initiation process a global initiatory process but in the meantime we have to we have to um, not get pulled in to the lower psychic influences that are trying to exploit this pro this moment of dissolution and rearrangement because um, if we do then we are likely to get aligned or attached to these lower vibratory energies which feed on the fear 
um, the greed, manipulations, and we're going to miss out because we won't be synchronizing with the new frequency arrangement coming into being across the planet. So if we can see this as a global shamanizing initiatory process, then we can drop the fear and um, we can see the potentials in this. And the signs are all there, all around us. Um, it's a cultural deconstruction as well as a reality paradigm deconstruction. Um, and it may take a generation or two, um, but I suspect within the next few years and the next decade especially, we're going to see um, some of the um, most potent signs of this and the most potent signs and symbols of this rearrangement. So as we move through this, um, the greatest element we have is the element of um, the human being not being caught up in artificial narrative, artificial programs, artificial trajectories, taking us away from the human spirit, the human heart, the human community. And having those alignments uh, with the energy that the human being could connect with beyond this reality, it will help us to move through, pull us through. And um, human community is going to come stronger through this um, if it can uh, use this to align correctly. So just a few words from that. And um, thank you for bearing with me and listening to this. And, um, well, as always... Um, we're here to be, um, to stay sane, stay healthy, and stay grounded. Until next time. Cheers.